from players fighting each other to the most magical shots in tennis to players risking their life on a flooded court. Today, we're looking at the most incredible moments in tennis history. The fans didn't realize they were getting a lot more than what they paid for at 2016 Japan Open Tennis Championships with Kyrgios' fantastic tennis plays. Like this forehand volley that had the umpire, the commentators, the crowd, and even his opponent, Muller, standing still with his jaw on the floor. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Casper Ruud could have been a magician in another life. I mean, look at this net roll shot. Rude made history that day for the most precise backhand tennis has ever seen and for winning three consecutive ATP titles in as many weeks as Andy Murray in 2011. Five hours and 45 minutes. That's how long Andy Murray and Thanasi Kokonakis were at it during the 2023 Australian Open. That has got to be one of the longest games in history, right? Kokonakis ended up smashing his racket to the ground and Murray screaming in victory. You might be dedicated to your job, but are you get hit in the face and get right back up dedicated? That high honors reserved for the ball boy at Gabashvili and Almagro's 2016 Barcelona friendly. Ace count into double figures for the Spaniard. These players unknowingly put their lives at risk dancing on a flooded tennis court. After a long day of flying all over town, this pigeon wanted to kick back its wings and relax. Unfortunately, Lucy Safarova had a game to win. It was, after all, 2014 Wimbledon. Well, some pigeons have decided to drop in on court number three and enjoy the tennis that's being played. <laughs> Not leaving in a hurry. But have you ever seen a earthquake erupt during a tennis match? If you're either Alexander Zverev or Dominic Koepfer, you'll keep going with the game because, well, winning the ATP Mexican Open semifinal is worth sticking through the earth wobbling a bit. To be fair, you can still play the game while shaking around. But could you play in the dark? If you're wondering why the camera was just moving a little bit during that last point. It wasn't dodgy camera work. We're having a little bit of a kind of a mini earthquake here. Could you play in the dark? You'd think after splurging millions on the court, stands, and just about everything else at the Talon Open, they'd invest in a backup generator too. Oh my goodness. That must have been annoying for Annette Kontavite, but she wasn't half as annoyed as Stefanos Tsitsipas at the 2023 Cincinnati Masters against Ben Shelton. It's a high stakes game. You're ready to serve and there's this buzzing noise. Is it a bee? No, apparently it's the bee woman who kept buzzing each time Tsitsipas lifted his racket. Person imitating a bee behind me. Oh yeah? Yeah, I'll take care. But uh, it's, it's a buzz right before I serve. Stefanos handled that a lot more calmly than Danny Medvedev would have. I mean, we all remember what happened at the 2021 Southern Open, right? Medvedev wasn't in a forgiving mood, even though he crashed into the camera in the first place. But these weren't even the craziest moments yet. Later this video, we'll look at Tsitsipas getting so frustrated, he almost beat up his father, a player serving so hard that the entire net collapsed, and a tennis racket just snapping in half. So make sure to continue watching to the end of the video to not miss any of the amazing moments coming up. Do you know how hard it is to get confetti out of grass? I'd imagine very because that's what the Just Stop oil protesters were going for when they sprayed confetti and jigsaw pieces on Wimbledon court. The protesters were kicked out to a crowd booing them as they left. Wait, please. Oh. Keeping up with how horrible can tennis crowds get? 
Let's revisit the time when Alexander Zverev had a fan ejected from the 2023 US Open match against Janik Sinner when he phrased the most famous man in German history in a game. Robin Hassa might not have won against Roger Federer at the 2017 Canadian Open, but he sure did win the crowd. Great joke, Roger. Er, sorry, Robin. Wide position just to help with the angle. The heavy kicker worked out. <laughs> Nick Kyrgios featuring in this list can't be any good, right? But don't worry, Kyrgios was on his best behavior at the 2019 Wimbledon game against Jordan Thompson, yelling out, can't buy a serve after a bad first serve, and had a fan yell back, can't buy a second either. Oh, can't buy a first serve. Oh, Net second serve. You know what they say, you can't just talk the talk, you have to walk the walk too. Someone clearly didn't tell Stefanos Tsitsipas that was the motto when he got into it with Donny Medvedev. Hey Stefanos, you wanna look at me and talk? Daniel, 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 Daniel. You kid, look at me. Daniel. Hey, look at me, huh? Daniel. You don't look at me. He started it. He said bullshit Russian, you think this is normal? I answered him because he doesn't know how to fight. He's a small kid who doesn't know how to fight. Is yelling out during serves and distracting Murray poor sportsmanship? Yes, but it also helped the Italian win a fifth time in 2023 too. When I had a volley on top of the net, yeah. he shouts, yeah. shut up. Corentin Moutet is two things, a great tennis player and a sore loser. When he lost against Adrian Andre for the second time in a row, he probably thought the best way to get on top was to physically pin the Bulgarian down to the ground. Let's play a game of what do you know Stefan Kubek for. Your options are being the world's number 20 seed for a month in 2000, testing positive for steroids, or almost choking out Daniel Cullerer at the Austrian League in 2010. It's probably not the first two. Cullerer kept his cool, but he's no prince either. The guy has a lifetime ban for match fixing. Hey. Apostolos Tsitsipas has been there every step of the way for his son, Steph. Literally, even when his son almost threw a racket at him. Now to be fair, Stefanos didn't intend on hitting his dad, and luckily caught his guard in time. But man was he frustrated during his game against Kyrgios at the Australian ATP Cup. But you know who gets the shortest end of the stick no matter who's playing or how rowdy the crowd is? Yup, the umpires. Dani Medvedev, and probably the entire tennis community, has just about had it with Stefanos Tsitsipas. Are you stupid? His father can talk every point. His father can talk every point. His father can talk every point. Repeat my answer my question. The global population is split between deciding if Nick Kyrgios water bottle was smacked at the umpire's chair, or if it slipped out of his hands. The clip makes it as clear as day, but Kyrgios is the kind of man who'd have you believe the sun's out at night. He really went with the my hand slipped play at the 2019 Washington Open. Yeah, no, he was fined $25,000. At least an umpire's never actually been hit, right? Think again. To be fair, Shapovalov was devastated after the hit. Add that to being disqualified, fined, and having to see the clip replayed a million times. But this story has a happy ending. The Canadian player and the umpire, Arnaud Gabas, are actually close friends now. After Gabas had eye surgery, of course. Ah! 
Zverev, though, was out for blood. You know what they say? Don't beat yourself up. So Alexander decided to beat up the umpire and only barely missed. He was, however, slapped with a $40,000 fine for it. The last thing you'd expect while watching a tennis match is a stray racket hitting you in the face. Agnieszka Radwanska swung the ball in one direction and her racket in another during the 2011 Australian Open. The look on her face when she saw she was holding about a fourth of her racket was priceless. Another time a racket failed a sportswoman. Hurry, your hair's stuck in your racket during the 2014 US Open and it's your serve. What do you do? If you're Caroline Wozniacki, you power through and play the next shot with your hair wrapped around the racket because there's no way a bad hair day is going to come between you and that win. Eugenie Bouchard defended her decision to coldly pass on shaking Alexandra Dolgaru's hand, saying that she doesn't believe in wishing her opponents luck before their game. Well, the Canadian tennis player could have done with some luck after Dolgaru destroyed her during the match. <laughs> Let's talk about a more wholesome fail now. Let's be honest here. How many of us can successfully sign our names in the wrong direction for it to appear right for the person looking at the screen from the other side? Sure, not many of us have actually ever tried it out. But when you're a tennis sensation like IGA Swiatek, you have to sign your name in every which way, including on a camera lens. She attempted to sign the lens after winning against Coco Gauff at the Dubai Championships, realized she'd made a mistake, and asked for a do-over. Um, that would have been fine if she hadn't just used a permanent marker. And just when you thought you'd seen it all, here comes Yang Xiaoxua saying, not so fast. At a doubles match in Hobart, she serves with so much force it brings down the net. Everyone had a laugh, even the umpire calling it in. You won't believe what just happened. After seeing the good, bad, and the ugly side of Nick Kyrgios, let's look at the funny. Kyrgios has left everyone speechless throughout his career, but he'd never met an umpire like James Kyotovong until 2018's Wimbledon. The umpire's witty reply had everyone, even Kyrgios, in fits. Oh, he's been called. There it is. He has to do. He can't call it before you hit it. <laughs> the ball. Well, maybe James is, is, is good. But it, the re Karen Kachinov didn't go home with the win against Daniel Evans at the 2020 European Open quarterfinals. But he did land a date with the umpire. The Russian wasn't ready to accept that the umpire called the ball out. So he proposed the two rewatch the game together the next day. Fair enough, since the ball was clearly in. Well, he's not convinced. Oh, sorry. That's why I called. If okay, it's... we will go tomorrow, today after the match, and we'll watch together. Okay? Okay? Yeah. Carlos Alcaraz is the world's number two seed, and Hugo Gaston is number 92. Now, who do you think won when the two went head-to-head -head at the ATP Masters 1000 in Paris? The Frenchman Gaston playing in front of his home crowd in Paris went from five, zero down to winning it all. Just look at how much the fans supported him. Well, nobody saw this coming. When now, surely... Another break. You feel for Alcaraz, head in the towel, head in his hands. I'm sure he's feeling emotional under there. I can't believe what has happened. He's done it. That's one of the most remarkable 
sets of tennis you will see.